So welcome to MLT Online Classes. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about classification of fungal diseases. So before discussing about classification of fungal diseases, let us quickly revise previous topic. So in the last session, we discussed about laboratory diagnosis of fungal diseases. So how we can diagnose them? We can diagnose them by three methods. What are the three methods? Direct microscopy, culture and tissue sections. So first let us see what are the techniques we have in direct microscopy. So under direct microscopy, we, we will perform four types of preparations. What are those? KOH preparation, KOH with calcophore, gram staining and inhaling. So in KOH, what we will do? So we will take a drop of potassium hydroxide on a glass line and we will add the fungal specimen and we will observe under the microscope after placing cover slip. Now, KOH is not so efficient, so we have an, um, an advanced method called KOH with calcophore. So calcophore will brightly stain the fungi and it, the fungus will be visualized brightly under the UV microscope. So your fungus looks like this under KOH with calcophore. Then there are a few fungus which are gram positive and gram negative. Say for example, your candida. Candida is a yeast fungus which is a gram positive yeast. So in order to identify some gram positive yeast cells, we will go for gram staining. And last and final is your Indian ink staining. So Indian ink staining is also called as a negative staining where we will stain the background of the slide to visualize the capsules, capsulated yeast cells. So the best thing, the best fungus to identify or the best fungus which has this capsule is Cryptococcus neoforms. So Cryptococcus neoforms can be identified by Indian ink preparation. So this is your Cryptococcus and uh, it has a capsule. So this capsule can be visualized by Indian ink staining. So these are the four methods included in direct microscopy. Next we have culture. So in culture, we will perform a standardized culture media for fungus, which is SDA agar. So Sabros dextrose agar is a uh, highly specific fungal medium. In it, we can grow fungus. And we, we can also eliminate the growth of uh, contaminating fungus and contaminating bacteria can be eliminated by using SDA. After growth of fungus in SDA medium, we need to observe it under a mount and that uh, fungal specific mount is lactophenol cotton blue. So lacto under lactophenol cotton blue, we can able to visualize the whole parts, the complete structure of the fungus without alternating its morphology. So this is how your uh, fungus looks like under lactophenol cotton blue. Then we discussed about tissue sections. So sometimes there are fungal infection which is systemic in nature. That means they will penetrate deep into the tissue that results in uh, deep infections. So these deep infections can be uh, deep infections or uh, your systemic in fungal infections can be determined by taking a section, a biopsy of the specimen and section. So let me show you one classical example. So this is mycetoma infection where it is infected to the food. So in order to identify this fungus, we will take a biopsy, a small part of this uh, skin sample and we will go for section cutting. And then we will go for staining with special stains such as periodic acid shift stain. By that we can visualize the fungus. So these are the three techniques we have under laboratory diagnosis of fungus. What are the three techniques? Direct microscopy, culture and tissue sections. So this is all about uh, revision. Then let us go for uh, your today's topic which is classification of fungal diseases. So coming to the classification of fungal diseases, we have three types of fungal diseases. By the way, the infection that is occurred by fungus is called as mycosis. So fungal infections are called as mycosis. So the state of having a fungal infection in a patient is called as mycosis. So these mycosis is uh, majorly divided into three types. So the fungal, they are your uh, superficial mycosis, subcutaneous mycosis and Systemic mycosis. So superficial mycosis means these are the fungal infections that will uh, infect the superficial layers of our body, such as your skin, hair, and nails will get affected by superficial mycosis. Then your subcutaneous mycosis. So these subcutaneous fungal infections will 
penetrate just below the skin so it will go up to the subcutaneous layer of the skin and it will infect in the subcutaneous layer of the skin these kind of infections are called as subcutaneous infections or subcutaneous mycosis and last and final is your systemic infections systemic mycosis so in systemic mycosis they will penetrate into the deep into the organs and they will start spreading throughout the body they will infect your whole organ such as your brain your uh, lungs so internal organs will get affected by systemic mycosis so these are the three types of fungal infections we have what are those superficial infections subcutaneous infections and deep mycosis or systemic infections so in superficial infection this is further classified into two types so the superficial infections are classified into two types they are your surface infections and cutaneous infections so surface infections means they will only uh, infect the surface of the body so they are called a surface infection and the cutaneous infection means these fungal this fungus can go up to the cutaneous layer of the skin so these are the two types of infections present in the uh, superficial mycosis so once again i'm saying superficial mycosis include two types surface infections and cutaneous infections then you have your subcutaneous infection then you have systemic infection so let us see your superficial infection first so in superficial mycosis as i said we have surface infections and cutaneous infections so the surface infection causing funguses are pinea vesicula pinea nigra and piedra then you have cutaneous infection cutaneous infection include dermatophytes so dermatophytes are the class of fungal infections where they will affect the skin they will infect the skin the cutaneous layer of the skin so these are strictly surface infections involving skin hair nail and mucosa these include infections like dermatophytes there are few specific names for this fungus like petrias form orbicular then um, exophila wernicke pediatra hortia and uh, trichospora and belgi so this we will see in the next lectures so just know there are something called surface in superficial infections in superficial infections we have surface infection and cutaneous infection so i will show you the images of surface infection so this is how your surface infection looks like they will affect the only surface layer of the skin then you have your cutaneous infection so cutaneous infection will go just below the skin and they will affect the cutaneous layer of the skin resulting in inflammation and patchy discoloration of the skin like this so this is about uh, all about your superficial infection then let us go for subcutaneous infection so in subcutaneous infection we have so the subcutaneous infections uh, these fungus present uh, in the soil in the putrefying dead organisms and they will infect your subcutaneous layer of the skin so the famous uh, fungal infections in subcutaneous mycosis include your mycetoma chromoblastomycosis porotrichosis rhinosporidiosis if i'm just telling the names of mycetoma chromoblastomycosis you may not feel so significant let me show you the infections of the the images of these infections then you will understand how much uh, uh, the suffering the patient will have due to this infection so let me show you the subcutaneous infection of mycetoma so this is the mycetoma so this mycetoma see how this fungal infection infected the the subcutaneous layer of the skin so it will form nodules and they will also have subcutaneous uh, necrosis and abscess of the tissue so there there will be a fluid discharge from these tissues and they will form nodules within the skin and this condition is called mycetoma this mycetoma is occurred due to some specific funguses that we will study in detail in the next lectures so this is about mycetoma then you have your chromoblastomycosis so this is the infection of chromoblastomycosis see how this chromoblastomycosis affected this uh, poor man leg so this is your chromoblastomycosis and you have one more infection which is your sporotrichosis so this is sporotrichosis so all these infections caused by various types of subcutaneous funguses so those funguses we will study later okay so this is all about your subcutaneous mycosis so what are those so these fungus will infect uh, the subcutaneous layer of the skin resulting in progressive local disease with tissue destruction and sinus formation these uh, mycosis include mycetoma chromoblastomycosis and sporotrichosis then let us see about your systemic mycosis systemic mycosis or deep mycosis so when i say systemic mycosis these are the fungal infections that will 
spread throughout the complete systems of our body like your uh, central nervous system or your respiratory system they will go deep into the uh, at, at uh, organ level they will infect so one best example for systemic infection is your cryptococcus neoforms infection so cryptococcus neoforms infection will infect your brain resulting in formation of nodules within brain obviously you can understand the situation of the patient what happens what if, if he has the cryptococcus neoforms infection so see all these nodules the small nodules are the fungus balls fungus which is growing inside the brain so this is the fungal growth mass of fungal growth within the brain resulting in cryptococcus neoforms then we have aspergillosis infection so aspergillosis is the infection which occurs to your lungs resulting in respiratory problems so this is a normal lung and this is the lung with aspergillus infection so you can see how this uh, lung will get affected just imagine a bread which is uh, decaying bread will have this fungus infection right the fungal growth on bread just like that your lungs will start uh, get infected by this uh, aspergillus this fungus and your lungs start decaying inside the thoracic cavity so this is your aspergillus infection and you have one more systemic infection which is the blasto histoplasmosis so histoplasmosis means it will spread to all the tissues in the body via blood so this is histoplasmosis and you have one more which is coccidiomycosis so so this is the images of coccidiomycosis so these are the three types of fungal infections we have in our body so what a, a quick summary of today's lecture so we have superficial infections subcutaneous mycosis and systemic mycosis in superficial mycosis the fungus will grow only on the surface infections these include two types surface infections and cutaneous infections so then we have subcutaneous mycosis in subcutaneous mycosis they will go up to the subcutaneous layer of the skin and they will infect so in subcutaneous mycosis we have mycetoma chromoblastomycosis and sporotrichosis then coming to your systemic mycosis in systemic mycosis we have cryptococcus neoforms infection aspergillus histoplasmosis and coccidiomycosis so these are the fungal infections that will affect the organs the, the organs within our body so this is all about your classification of fungal diseases in the next lecture we will start discussing about in detail about each and every fungal infection including your uh, uh, starting with your superficial mycosis first we will discuss about what are surface infections what is tinea vesicular what is tinea nigra in detail in the next lecture okay we will discuss superficial mycosis so thank you students thank you very much